Hi, I'm Ty, and I'm on a mission to grow as much as I can here at PDX Garden Home, a half-acre urban garden in Portland, Oregon, Zone 8B. I pursue this goal to donate harvest to food pantries and just for the love of gardening. Come along, let me show you what I've been up to this week. I'd like to talk about how I use this unheated greenhouse in the month of February. We're in the heart of winter here, and it can be tempting to put our garden aspirations on hold until spring. But as gardeners, we know that the cooler months like this are an opportunity to get ahead on the growing season. And an unheated greenhouse like this can be a great way to do that. This greenhouse provides sheltered environment for plants, protecting them from the most extreme frosts and I have an electric heater going that'll keep it just above freezing on the coldest nights. This is a glass greenhouse and it isn't particularly well insulated. So without the heater going and no sun overnight, it would be about the same temperature as it is outside without the extra cold or wind chill or rain coming in. And next week, it's gonna be about 22 degrees here at PDX Garden Home. But even though it's unheated and still relatively cold in here at night, you can start seeds earlier and get a head start on the growing season. If you haven't done this before, I would try hardy annuals and perennials such as pansies, primroses, and wallflowers. They can provide flowers earlier for you in your spring garden that way. You can also start seeds of vegetables such as lettuce, spinach, and peas, and you've seen I've done some of those here, and they'll be ready to put out in the spring. I used to start all my seeds in here this time of year using heat mats for germination and domes for humidity for a and a little extra warmth. But now I germinate in the basement nursery and then I bring those starts up here that are cold hardy enough to be in here in the greenhouse even though it still gets cold. That gives me extra germination space under the lights in the basement nursery and it allows these things that are cold hardy enough to get natural light and grow on. You can see that I have lots of onions. In addition, this greenhouse is an ideal place to overwinter plants that can handle some amount of cold but aren't generally far frost tender. Uh, the things that I have like that are citrus trees. I have an orange and a lemon that are trying to survive the winter in here thanks to being kept out of the harsh wind, freezing, and snow, and they have the little bit of heat that comes off the electric heater to keep them from freezing, totally freezing, at night. Usually when you have a greenhouse, you're going to put in some kind of floor. A lot of people will do gravel or they sometimes leave dirt because they're going to plant in the ground. Our floor here is a brick floor that I put in. Um, and that provides a little bit of heat radiating after the sun will kind of come in here and it heats up the flooring and that can radiate a little bit. I don't know that it helps that much, but I liked it because it looked nice. And frankly, a lot of what happens in this greenhouse was for the look. The greenhouse serves the function of a good looking focal piece for the garden, a backdrop for the garden, um, as well as a, the functional of being able to grow some plants early in here. And now this year during the winter, we brought the deck furniture in here. And so it's been a nice place to come in and hang out uh, and get the feeling of outdoors, even though it's pretty cold outside. Let's talk about planting vegetable seeds indoors. Now's a great time to be planting a variety of greens. First, let me say that planting seeds indoors in February is a great way to get a head start on the growing season. By starting your seeds indoors, you can enjoy fresh greens and vegetables generally before they'd be ready if you were to plant them directly in the ground. To get started, you would need a sunny window seal or a grow light setup. I'm using lights in my basement nursery. Some potting or seed starting mix, and of course, your seeds. I use these six cell trays for starting almost all kinds of seeds. I fill the trays with my potting mix, and then I plant the seeds according to the package instructions. Generally, I'm covering the seeds with potting mix based on the size of the seed, burying the smaller seeds more shallow than the larger ones, and then I'm making sure to keep the soil moist, but not too wet. My strategy this year for watering trays is what we call bottom watering. This week, I've been planting a variety of seeds, including lettuce, radicchio, broccoli, cauliflower, uh, radish, and arugula. Each of these vegetables is unique in terms of its growing requirements, so it's important to know what you're in for before you start planting. Lettuce is a quick growing vegetable that can be planted in pots or trays and then transplanted into the garden 
uh, once it's established its roots. Radicchia will be a bit more finicky, but it's well worth the effort for its gorgeous deep red leaves and a slightly bitter taste. Broccoli and cauliflower are both members of the brassica family. They're two of my favorites and they're perfect for planting indoors this time of year. They're going to be a bit slower to germinate, but then they will get going. Radishes are another quick growing plant that can be planted indoors. Uh, most people would plant them outside and they're surprised that I'm doing this in trays indoors. Uh, but I swear it does work. You can put them in here, multi-sow them, several to a tray, and then transplant the plugs out into the garden and they will mature just fine. Arugula is a tasty, nutritious leafy green that is easy to grow indoors, and it's also a great option for people who are new to gardening as it's very forgiving of mistakes. It grows relatively fast, so the most common mistake I see is people not harvesting it soon enough. If you don't get your arugula out of the ground soon enough, it can get too hot and too bitter. Planting these vegetables from seed is an excellent way to get started in your gardening journey this winter. With a little bit of effort and patience, you can be harvesting fresh, delicious greens in just a few months. So go ahead. Get your hands dirty and see what you can grow this winter. This week I'm moving some seedlings from under indoor lights in the basement nursery to my unheated greenhouse. The days are just starting to get longer, which conveniently coincides with my onions, radish, lettuce, snapdragons, and salvia outgrowing the basement nursery. It's time to move these seedlings to a new home. I'm only moving the seedlings for plants that can handle colder temps into the unheated greenhouse. I have an electric heater going on out there, but it's really just enough to keep it from freezing. So things like eggplants and petunias, they have to stay in the basement nursery. The cold tolerant seedlings I'm moving are well beyond the stage of having two true leaves. Well, this is a little unexpected. My petunias are blooming. I say a little unexpected because, I mean, I had a couple that would bloom early last year, but I'm at the end of February. Whoops. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm going to pot them up and everything, but it's not going to be warm enough for these to be outside for a little while here. So uh, yeah, I've got some uh, cool petunias that'll be growing in the basement for a bit. I don't do anything to prevent the shock of being exposed to the cold environment of this greenhouse. I changed the bottom tray to my outdoor trays that are mesh rather than solid bottoms, because in the cold weather, the soil will not dry out as quickly as it does in the basement. And then, when I eventually move these trays outside, I won't risk the tray being flooded due to rain and drowned out seedlings. Well, an update on the snapdragons here. I'm moving them out to the greenhouse. Uh, you can see that they're barely starting to bloom, and these are can, can be somewhat cold tolerant. So, um, you know, in theory, they're perennials. So I'm moving them out here where it's not going to be as warm as the basement nursery uh, to give myself more space in the basement nursery. But the other thing you can see with these is that I've got um, multiple plants growing in a cell. So what I really need to do is get in and divide them into individual pots so I'll have way more snapdragons when it's all done. But I don't know if I'll have time. We'll see if I can fit that into the season. I, I think last year I had a similar issue and I just never had time to kind of divide them into individual pots. And so they just kind of went out and clustered like that, which is not optimal, um, but does work. I'm starting the year here with more onion and radish starts than last year as part of my goal to increase the amount of produce I grow and donate this year. I'm trying to hit an average of 30 pounds a week which may be ambitious compared to last year because I only averaged under 20 pounds a week last year. I also dream of growing enough flowers to do cut bouquets that can also be donated to grace the tables of the communities that the neighborhood food pantries serve. I mean, in reality, I grow because I like to grow, but it's nice to think that I can have a greater purpose, you know? These seedlings will sit here at least a week before I start considering planting in the beds outside. In practice, it'll probably be longer because we're expecting 22 degree nights next week. And even after that, I probably won't have enough time to get all these in the ground, even in the next 14 days. So they may be here for a good 20 days or so as I slowly work on getting them into the beds by, eh, let's say mid-March. Thanks for watching. And hey, don't forget to like and subscribe. You can watch my progress towards growing more.